saints, peace, grace, love of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day out there today. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we know the word of truth is all 66 books in the King James Version Bible. It's God's Word. Now on the screen in front of us, we have everything that we've studied thus far in the book of Acts. Everything from the year 30 AD to 40, 48 AD. And in our last study on chapter 13 of Acts, we saw Paul and Barnabas on their first journey in the year is 48 AD. And Paul is going out to tell all the scattered flock of the Jews in the Mosaic Law during the Kingdom program. Paul's entire ministry is to reach all the persecuted Jews who fled Jerusalem during the massive outpouring of persecution towards the Israelites and those who believe in the name of Jesus Christ. And we know from the last couple of chapters that Paul has been living in Roman Tarsus, preaching this new gospel of grace to both Jews and Gentiles for the past 10 plus years. And now he's taking this gospel as far and wide as possible. Salvation by faith without the law. And because the gospel of grace is without the law, Paul's facing much opposition from the law-minded Jews. These kingdom Jews aren't too fond of the Apostle Paul. And so far, the Jews have been chasing Paul out of every city that he's visited. However, through God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, there have been many, many Gentiles and Jews added to the body of Christ because of Paul's message. The body of Christ is growing stronger each and every single day. Everything Paul is preaching here is the direct opposite of keeping the law. From performing good works. The opposite from earning your way into heaven. The opposite from the Mosaic law system. In the last study, Acts chapter 13, I gave you a short homework assignment. And there's a reason why I did that. For those of you who read Galatians, you saw exactly what Paul has been contending with throughout the early part of his ministry. Contending with the law-minded Jews following the protocol of the Mosaic Law program. Now, let's look at Galatians real quick. Let's see what Paul's been preaching in the early ministry. In Galatians 3, verse 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to them. Galatians 2, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2 again, verse 19, For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Galatians 3.11, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. In verse 23, But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. In Galatians 4, 4, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them 
that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Galatians 5, 4. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Okay, so that gives us an idea of what Paul's been preaching. He's revealing this mystery gospel, the gospel of grace that was revealed to him by Jesus in Damascus and in Arabia. Now we move into today's study in chapter 14. Paul and Barnabas just got kicked out of the last city. And here we see them in Iconium. Now if you look at the map real quick, we see the second Antioch. And below that, we see Iconium. That's where they are now. Acts 14 verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogues of the Jews, and so spake, that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Now, both of the Jews and Greeks. Who are the Greeks again? The Greeks are the Gentiles. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. The Jews don't like anything Paul is preaching here because it's all about, it's all without the law. It's all about Jesus Christ as being their Messiah. And they don't want anything to do with that whatsoever. Verse 3, Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now we see one of the reasons why Paul and Barnabas had these signs and wonders. They're witnessing to the Jews here. Plus, they're making them jealous. Remember, in the past few videos, I explained why Paul had these abilities early on in his ministry. There's a small window of time when the kingdom gospel and the mystery gospel are overlapping. A small window of time. But it doesn't stay that way for long. This is only a, is, is a temporary situation while Paul is trying to reach his brethren, the unbelieving Jews who don't believe that Jesus was their Messiah. In verse 4, But the multitude of the city was divided, in part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully, and to stone them, they were aware of it, and fled unto Lystra and Derb, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And looking at the map once again, notice where Paul and Barnabas are. They're in Lystra and Derb, cities of Lyconia, in the Galatian territory again. It's going to help if you read the book of Galatians, like I suggested earlier, to understand the behind the scenes, if you will, of what Paul's thinking here. That's all part of studying, all part of right division. Simply reading the Bible isn't going to do anything for you except make you confused. You need to rightly divide the Bible. You need to study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman not being ashamed later on at the judgment seat of Christ. As we can continue on in verse 8, And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Paul has the ability to heal right on the spot. He's not making legs grow, grow out by blowing on them. This is the real gift of healing that we're seeing here. This isn't a money scam. Verse 11, And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. These signs and wonders that Paul had 
were so powerful that the people thought they were gods sent to them. Verse 12, And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes, they tore their clothes off, and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are in, therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came to the certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead howbeit as the disciples stood round about him he rose up and came into the city and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derb now there is a false teaching based on this incident that we just read the teaching says that this is where Paul died and went to heaven and got to see all the beautiful things in heaven and so on. There's a problem with that theory and here's why. First of all, this verse never says Paul died. It says they thought he had died. Second, when you rightly divide and you follow all the dates God gives us in his word for a reason, you'll see that it just doesn't add up. Let me show you why. There is a passage in scripture that Paul writes that he had died and gone to heaven. And let's take a look at that. 2 Corinthians and in uh, chapter 12, verse 1, It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body, or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up. Caught up is this word harpazo. Rapture. Into paradise. And I heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So Paul writes here that it happened 14 years ago. So 14 years prior to the writing of 2 Corinthians comes to the date right around 40 AD. Nowhere near the date that Paul's in Lystra in 48 AD. That's 8 to 10 years off. So concerning this false teaching in order for Paul to have been caught up to heaven in Lystra that means 2nd Corinthians would have been written somewhere around 62 AD and we know that's not possible because Paul was in Rome and right around this uh, it was this last year in prison during the year 62 AD so when Paul had this experience of being caught up to heaven remember the phrase caught up here is harpazo rapture I think this was and this is my educated guess here based on the dates and right division and Paul's travel travels I think Paul was in Arabia at the time where he was raptured to heaven and given a glimpse of our future Paul was shown the mystery hid within God since the foundation of the world and I believe that Jesus revealed to Paul very much of that mystery 
including all the other mysteries, one being the rapture, by actually rapturing Paul up to heaven to reveal to him what's in store for the body of Christ. Our seating in heavenly places, our future domain once we're caught up at the rapture. Anyhow, according to the dates and locations and right division, Paul is taken up to heaven. He is raptured to heaven. He writes about his experience in 2 Corinthians for us. And he only reveals parts of the mystery. So, the teaching that Paul was caught up to heaven when he got stoned in Lystra doesn't add up for various reasons. And, you know, if only people would rightly divide, we'd avoid 90% of all the foolishry being taught today. Amen? Now, continuing on, Acts 14, verse 21, And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and Antioch, to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Did I skip a verse? Verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Sorry about that. Verse 23, and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, uh, Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Attilia, and thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. They returned back to where they left. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, church here, remember, is the word ecclesia, an assembly of believers. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Did you hear that? How he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Okay, so looking at the map once again, we see Paul and Barnabas here in Derb. Now they work backwards. They make the same loop they did when they came in, in reverse. Back down to Perga. Then setting sail back to Antioch. And they debrief the body of Christ about everything that just took place on Paul's first trip. They're telling everyone about all the Jews and Gentiles added to the body of Christ. All the action they encountered along the way. I'm sure they talked about all the signs and wonders, the healings and miracles, people almost killing him by stoning, and the rest of his endeavors. The year again is late 48 AD, early 49 AD. Paul is about to head down to Jerusalem for what we know as the Jerusalem Council. And we'll see that in the next chapter, chapter 15. And also, we'll be getting into Paul's second trip, which should be very interesting indeed. Until then, peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Lord willing, I'll see you for chapter 15 of our study on the book of Acts.